the late Pete and Alice Dye. They went from selling insurance to designing some of the most iconic golf courses in the world. They married in Indianapolis shortly after World War II and called Indiana home for years to come. Well, the Dyes played an integral role in moving the game of golf forward. And in Indiana, we're right in the middle of golf season, a particularly busy one for the Indiana Golf Association. Bill Benner has more in this week's Inside Indiana Sports Bill. Thanks, Gary. In addition to overseeing a number of statewide competitions, the IGA is conducting the Campbell campaign in preparation for its move into a new home at Fort Harrison, renewing its emphasis on its first tee program to introduce youth statewide to the game and conducting an economic impact study. Other than that, not much going on. Joining us today to provide details is the executive director of the IGA, Mike David. Mike, welcome. 32 years at the helm. That's hard to believe. Seems like yesterday, Bill. Seems <laughs> like yesterday. Well, you're and you're busier than ever. And and uh, uh, one of the offshoots we talked off before we went on the air, one of the positive offshoots of COVID is the number of new people it's driven to the uh, to the game of golf. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. It took a pandemic to drive this many people to the game, but there wasn't a lot of other safe things to do. And fortunately, uh, people migrated to the golf course. Very fortunate for us in Indiana that the vast majority of the courses were open throughout the pandemic. People found out that it's great exercise. It's it's great for mental health. Um, so yeah, they're, they're still playing. A, a couple of years later, so it's all good. Well, speaking of migration and time, you will be migrating to a new headquarters at Fort Benjamin Harrison, the Allison Pete Dye uh, facility, and it's a, a wonderful gesture to name it after them, but it's going to be a huge advancement for the IGA. Yeah, you know, we had we had a great relationship with the Legends for 25 years in Franklin. Um, that facility kind of served its purpose. We stopped doing our camps when First Tee became uh, really relevant for us, so we looked at other options and, and uh, the fort came out as, as the leading candidate. Uh, we think we're gonna have a very visible site. And as you mentioned, the new facility is gonna be the Pete and Alice Dye Indiana Golf Center. So it'll hold uh, our administrative offices, our Indiana Golf Hall of Fame. And then the plan is to build an academy on the driving range where we will run first tee programming and also PGA Hope programming. You referenced first tee, a wonderful, wonderful program that as I said in the open, introduces youth statewide to the game of golf. And Nationwide. Nationwide, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a great program. It's a national youth development program. Obviously, golf is is kind of the the lead um, function of it, but it really teaches the life skills, the character building traits that, you know, when you think about it, no other sport really asks you to call penalties on yourself other than golf. So there's just a lot of those life skills that can be gained from the game of golf. And uh, since we've been involved with First Tee the last 10 years or so, we've seen phenomenal growth. We're in 18 different communities around the state. We're literally reaching 100,000 kids a year with first tee programming. So the growth is phenomenal, and, and I, I think that'll continue. As, as the growth continues, uh, the game continues to have a great impact. It generates jobs. Uh, you did an economic impact a, a number of years ago. You're coming back with that. But the numbers from the, the most recent one uh, are staggering. It, it's really shocking to hear how impactful golf is. I mean, the, the study we did 10 years ago showed that $1.7 billion in total economic impact to the state of Indiana every year. There are over 21,000, there were over 21,000 jobs in the game of golf. Um, and it, it has $530 million in wage income. And, and another very important aspect is that uh, $42.3 million in charitable giving was attributed to the game of golf. And that was 10 years ago. So we really think with the study we're doing uh, this year, those, those numbers are going to be much higher than they were before. And, and quickly, as we wrap up the groundbreaking, you hope for the new uh, golf Yeah, uh, we, we hope to break ground in November or December of, of 22, and then we hope to be in that new facility um, November or December of, of 23. Exciting news on all fronts. Mike yeah. David, Executive Director, 32 years for the Indiana Golf Association. Thanks for being with Thanks. us. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it.